In this video, I want to give you a quick rundown of the Cascade user interface. Now, Cascade can be accessed by double-clicking on any particle system in the content browser. Its interface is broken up into some just some basic key areas. We have a menu bar across the top, followed by a toolbar with a lot of our common functions. We have the preview window, which allows us to see what our particle system actually looks like, and this is navigable like a 3D viewport. Now, to the right of this, we have our emitter list. This allows us to create and control various emitters to add to our particle system. Remember that a particle system is rarely ever going to be a single emitter. In uh, a lot of cases, if you have a really intricate effect, it's because you have several different emitters all working in concert. You can also create the modules that power the emitters here and select and adjust and even swap out these modules all right here inside the emitter list. Now down from here to the left, we have the properties window. As we select different modules, you'll notice that this will update. As we select individual emitters, we get the properties for that emitter. And if we deselect everything, we get the properties of the particle system itself. To the right, we have the curve editor, which shows us a graphical representation of any properties that are controlled over time. And we can edit the keyframes for those, as well as the interpolation curves and change our overall result. Now let's give a quick rundown of the functionality. Under the edit menu, we have the ability to save the package and regenerate the lowest LOD. I'll talk about LODs here in just a moment. Underneath view, we can control the visibility of several different aspects in our viewport, such as the origin axes, the number of particles coming out of any given emitter, and so on. If we go all the way down, we can uh, use a set motion radius, which I'll talk about the actual motion of this in a moment. Let me just set this to 150 for the time being, which is going to be its default value. You can save the camera position if you need to uh, store a particular location in your preview window that you like. Now under window, all, we, all we're really doing here is showing and hiding some of these different panels I pointed out. So if you don't want to see the properties window, you can turn it off. If you don't want to see the curve editor, you can turn that off too and just have the emitter list in the preview window. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn those back on. Now let's move down to the toolbar. First two buttons are restart sim and restart in level. Restart sim is just going to restart the simulation of your particle system. Notice as I click on it that our fire kind of starts over and the smoke starts emitting again. If you need that to happen in a particle system that's already been placed in your level, then you would click on restart in level. Next, we have find in content browser. If you click on this, it's going to select your current particle system in the content browser, so it'll be easier to place inside of a level. Next, we have save thumbnail image. Inside the content browser, every particle system has its very own thumbnail, and if you ever get that kind of no image icon, it's a good idea to jump in here and just click on the button to save out a new thumbnail. We can toggle orbit mode. Now this is going to be on by default, and it's really only useful if your particle system employs an orbit module. But currently we're not, so uh, we're not really going to see much of a result. We can toggle motion, and that's going to make our particle system run around in a circle if we want to see what this thing looks like while it's moving. And it looks pretty good while it's moving. We can change the view mode. So if we just left click on this, we're just cycling through different view modes. If you'd like more direct control, you can right click and choose the one you want to use. So we'll go ahead and leave this at lit for now. We can toggle bounds. Actually, let's not right click on that. If you left click on it first, you'll get bounds that just kind of flicker. And these bounds are constantly updating to completely encompass all of your particles. You see a sphere and a box. If you right click, you can set fixed bounds that don't move. So if you don't like that flickering effect, you can turn that off. Next, we have toggle post process. Right click on this and you can choose different post process effects to activate. For instance, now let's get close to our little fire again. We can turn on depth of field and see how that would look on our particles, just as an example. Now down from here, we have toggle grid. This gives you a three-dimensional grid, which not only can help you locate where you are in 3D space, but in this case also shows that we've got a little bit of a shimmer effect for our heat, which is pretty much invisible under a black background. We have play and pause. These do exactly what you think they do. Uh, play will keep the simulation playing. Pause will stop it. We can also set the sim speed. Now you can left click on this button and cycle through various simulation speeds, or you can right click and choose the one you want to use. So here's our fire at 25%. We'll go ahead and set that back up to 100. We can toggle the loop system. If you have a particle system that does one thing over and over again, like let's say an explosion, which is just going to go blam and then it's over. 
if you leave toggle loop system on, it'll just keep on exploding. So you can see what it looks like each time. If you only want to see it once, then turn your toggle loop system off. Now this particular particle system doesn't loop. It just goes on forever. So we won't see any result here. Toggle real time gives you real time results in your viewport. If we turn this off, our particle system will quit moving unless we're moving the mouse or causing other uh, updates. So we'll go ahead and leave that on. We can change the background color of our particle system window, our preview window. And sometimes you'll probably find yourself wanting to do this just to lighten up the background. Like if you have a, a particular effect and you want to see like maybe how much smoke billows in a lit room, then you can increase the color. And you can use any color of the rainbow, though generally I find myself using black and shades of gray. Now continuing on, we can toggle a wireframe sphere. If you click on this, it's going to ask you for a radius. Click OK, and here you go. It's just a wireframe sphere, which can be really good to help you get an idea of the overall scale of your particle system. We have undo and redo. These are fairly self-explanatory. And then we have our LOD controls. Now they start with jump to highest LOD, then jump to higher, add LOD before current, add LOD after current, jump to lower LOD, and jump to lowest LOD. So it would probably help if we had some idea of what LODs are. LOD is short for level of detail. You may have heard the term before. And what it refers to is an internal system for your particles that allow them to get simpler as you move away from them. And here's an example. Currently, our particle system has two levels of detail. We can go to edit and choose regenerate lowest LOD, or over here inside the toolbar, we can click regenerate lowest LOD. We will get a warning, but that's okay. We haven't really done anything special, so it's okay for it to erase anything we've done before. Now, you see we have two total LODs here in the window. If I click on jump to lower LOD, here's what my particle system suddenly looks like. A much simpler version of my flame. Also notice that many of my modules get grayed out. This is because they've been locked into a low setting. If we want to be able to change these, then we need to right click and actually set these up so that we can, uh, we can alter their, their settings. What I'm going to do though is set inside my spawn module here with our flame and we can take a our rate. Now our rate is currently set to 3.5. If we switch back over to our higher LOD, you'll notice it jumps up to 35. So you can see the relationship between the two. Now, if that's unacceptable, like let's just say here at our low LOD, a spawn rate of 3.5 is just not acceptable. It's too low. We can crank this up to a constant of 10 and start to get a little more flame. But what you're talking here is what do you want the flame to look like when you're really, really far away from it? Now, you see me moving around a lot here inside the uh, preview window. I'm navigating this such that if I drag with left mouse, let me go ahead and switch back up to my higher LOD. Uh, left mouse allows me to rotate around. Right mouse allows me to zoom in and out. And middle mouse allows me to pan the camera. So as we switch to these lower LODs, these textured modules are locked out and are not really being calculated anymore. So if we want to, we can right click on them and we can duplicate the next higher LOD. So if we grab, if we do this, say in this case, now let's find something that would maybe be a little more apparent, uh, such as, ooh, maybe on our smoke. So here we are with our low LOD. I'm trying to find something that would be really obvious. And there's not much here because this is a really simple particle system. That's okay, let's just grab our color over life and we'll duplicate the next higher LOD. And you'll notice that gets rid of the texture and now we can edit this value. We're no longer locked out of it. Now, that does mean that at this LOD, this particular module is requiring more calculations. So you wanna do this as little as possible because in the end, the whole idea of level of detail is to simplify your particle system as you move away from it. So that's just a quick walkthrough of LODs. Now, over here are our last few buttons. We can regenerate the lowest LOD, we can regenerate the highest LOD, and we can delete any extra LODs that we add. Now, as I mentioned, this allows us to change our detail as we move closer or further away from something. Currently, I have two levels of detail. If I deselect any of my modules and I jump down to the properties window, we're now looking at the properties for the particle system as a whole. And there's an LOD section here, which includes LOD distances. Notice that we have two LOD distances and we have two LODs. Our first LOD starts at zero, starts right at the location of our particle system. The next one begins 2,500 units away. So if we switch over to LOD2 and we get this simple flame, this is what we can expect to see 
if we were 2,500 units away. If we wanted that to happen while we were closer, all we'd have to do is change this value. We could pull this to any value we want. For instance, if we set this to 512 units, then our particle system would look like this if we were 512 units away. And that's how you can control when the LODs actually make their switch. So let's set this back over to 2500. Now overall, that's a look at the bulk of our user interface. So you've seen the, the toolbar, some stuff about the menu bar. We've taken a look at the preview window and how to navigate it. The, the emitter list, I mean, the easiest way to talk about this, aside from you're going to be adding all of your modules really by right-clicking and choosing them from these sub-menus, really the best way to learn this, though, is to get in and start using it, which we're going to start off in the next video actually building the fire effect that you see here. So let's go ahead and get started with just this uh, quick primer to the Cascade interface in place. Let's go ahead and start building our fire particle effect. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 